Welcome everybody, welcome to the Tomb of Illumination. Got a very, uh, quite a revealing video today. New information, never heard before. Most of my stuff's never been told before. So hang in there. Um, it's about the, uh, once again, the mythological stories and how it's all about a divine event. And to understand the divine event, you have to understand the flat earth model. Because all the mythological stories concern the flat earth model flat earth model. So before we get into that, I've got other stuff uh, beyond that to speak of as well, but before we get into that, just look at this. Um, every man dwells in his own personal arc of horizon. It's a 180 degree arc. So you can refer back to celestial navigation for this. So you are always 90 degrees to your zenith. So when you're doing any celestial navigation, your furthest point is 5,400 nautical miles. Because it's 90 degrees to there. And you've got 60 minutes. 60 minutes in a in a in a in one of these arcs of degrees 60 minutes of traveling across the ground across the ocean is one degrees of this arc one degree of this arc because we can't measure you can't take a lineal measurement across a sea can you you've got to take it from the sky like on land you could just survey a straight line and you get yourself a nautical mile because nautical miles we're working on this, okay? Just refer back to celestial navigation. So, for 90 degrees from there to there, it's 5,400 nautical miles. So, all your celestial bodies are no further than 5,400 nautical miles. Okay? So the sun, stars, everything are no further than that away from man. Arc of horizon. Everything passes over our arc of horizon. You can never get to it because as you move, obviously your zenith is going to move. You never get there because they're all projections onto your arc of horizon from out of the center core above the Arctic, projecting everything out here into our realm. Earth is from the whole, but so are we on a personal level. So we're always looking out from the center of the whole around us okay so 5400 nautical miles is the furthest point of any star or celestial body okay now look at this you see you're standing there 90 degrees to your zenith of your arc but your your horizon is only three three miles away that's when you start lose start losing the hull of a boat so they want you to believe that you live on a spinning ball because of that optical anomaly. So then you draw your, you're there, you draw miles to your horizon there and start drawing your spinning ball theory. There it is there, there's your spinning ball. Isn't it a bit strange you've got this sort of system here but your, your horizon when it comes to celestial navigation it's 4,000 miles away. So obviously the sky is going way beyond your visual perspective across the land at sea level. It's all to do with atmosphere and all that. Atmospheric lensing, whatever. It's all part of the torosphere, I suppose. It's a crystalline structure. Everything's going to be warped. So... Your boat starts disappearing here, hull first. Why is that? Here's an easy explanation as to why. Well, it's not going to disappear top first, is it? If your horizon is further overhead than your flat plane of Earth, three mile horizon. So the bottom is going to start disappearing, but not the top because it carries on. A lot of flat earth um, globers want to ask, they ask that question. Why is the hull disappearing? 
Well, it's straight there. It's in science. They should know it. Because the sky is way out here. Way beyond your visual perspective at ground sea level. So in celestial navigation, you're sh finding a star on the horizon or the sun coming up. That's where it is. It's no more than that distance. Never, ever. Any further than that. Okay? That's a new one. No one's explained it that way before. There's your horizon, your boat disappearing, but the sky is still way over here. This is a weird sort of a system of this globe idea, isn't it? This pers perspective. We are always at this point here. No matter where we look, we're only looking within our 180 degree arc of horizon. The Egyptians called it arc of horizon. Okay, I see Witsit gets it is mentioning the personal arc of horizon in some of those videos he's of his. So they're coming, they're getting there, but they they haven't touched on the the dual system yet, which is a bit weird. I've been talking about it for five years. No one's talking about it. Get down to the south, video the sky, track it the way I'm telling you it's going, and compare it with your north. Uh, just some points here, Zion, Lion, Leon, Leo, sorry, Zion, out of time, and this is the season, see how we spell season, in a lot of myth mythological stories about the sea, because it's all about a time, a season, and this is where seasoning comes from, we need to have the salts, the minerals in our systems come spring, be prepared, get our bodies prepared for the sun coming up. Uh, the mythological stories of Caesar, Caesar, seasoning. Caesar's all about the season and it's about spring. You have to check out a lot of my videos to find out what I'm talking about, why, why, why spring. It's all about Leo and Virgo. The divine stories, it's all about the um, uh, the equinoxes, uh, not really, but thereabouts, no, spring I should say, not equinoxes, spring, okay, you got the um, southern hemisphere spring here, and you've got the northern hemisphere spring over here, haven't you, opposite. Uh, right, lie on, lie on, in the English, look we have lie on, what's, what's lie on to do with the, the great story is the, the solar eclipse, it was at 29 degrees, they're now saying 28, but you know, it's written 29 degrees, ancient text, Leo, 21st of August, okay, a little bit out from uh, this drawing, back that way a little bit, that's the 20. First, there, and it was 29 degrees Leo, right on the cusp of Leo and Virgo. So, lie on, moon lays over the sun, the solar eclipse. Okay, the most divine solar eclipse occurred at 29 degrees Leo in ancient text. Uh, fixed signs fixed in the middle of a season. Uh, fixed divine events, maybe. Got mutable, movable, mutable, movable. Vary. Okay. Astronomical events can vary, or you know, divine moments can vary. Uh, anyway, um, fixed divine events. The diagonals. Diagonals of the saints. Okay. The fixed. The um, cardinals are below the saints, and first you must be a cardinal become, before you become a saint, or a king, or a, a pope. So it's all about, uh, you know, the Jesus story. He becomes a king, and, you know, he's, and he becomes, through being one of the saints, the occasions of the diagonals. 
and that's it there, that diagonal there, that, moon, that solar eclipse. That was the foretelling of the child being born. And the sun's raced around to there, but the moon is over here and the moon gives birth. Okay. Um, now, so we're going to some Ro the Roman um, mythology about Caesar, right? And it's connected with this Edes, an ancient Rome, a day falling in the middle of each month, 15th of March, May, J July, August, 13th on any other month. It all represents the first full moon of a given month. And there's the myth, beware of the Edes of March, full moon of spring. That's the Northern Hemisphere story. But the most divine one is the Southern Hemisphere spring. Okay? But this is the Roman version, Roman story, and the Roman version is about um, Caesar. About the death of Caesar. And they all think it's a true story about him being assassinated by three assailants. Brutus, Cassius, Decim Decimus, Decimus or Decimus. So Brutus, a descendant of Anes. I didn't expand on that. It's another long story. Uh, the Trojan, okay? The Trojan. It's about Troy. This gap. This gap. The tropical gap. Well, not exactly, but that's all you're going to get out of me at this stage till I get my book out. Okay, so there's Troy in there. Trojan War. Trojans and the Archaeans battling, fighting it out here. Because this is where all the energy is being created. Could say, uh, you know, science calls it um, radiation. Okay. It's being created in this gap. So, uh, in this whole divine story, Caesar's going through his divine story, and it's all about this gap at that time of the season. Season, spring, March. Uh, he born, you know, reborn, born again. Divine awakening, the full moon. Full moon. Oh, hang on. Full moon of spring. Uh, March. 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 Well, it's not a perfect story I'm telling you right here. <laughs> but it's to do with the full moons anyway. The full moon, and they're referring to the March spring, okay? Because our, our southern one, the full moon's in Pisces. The sun's in spring, but the moon. So, what the story is telling you is everything is referring to the moon. Okay, it's going to get better in a minute. Uh, also found of Britain, look, Brutus, a descendant of Arnes, Aenes, Aenes, the Trojan Troy. Also found of Britain. So Britain's another version of, you know, you got Rome, Britain, you've got Egypt. They're all um, divine stories of enlightenment. They're just of different names. Okay, if we go through the cycles of man or the, through over the years, uh, you got Cassius. Cassius is of two words. Cassus means hollow. This is considered hollow. Okay? There's no magnetic field crossing that tropical zone. Hollow and it's to do with this gap that's in here. Okay? This is going down into Hades. What does Hades mean? The unseen. So it's to do with the 6th of September prior to the equinoxes. A period where all these divine things happen unseen to man. Okay? Uh, hollow and Cassus means helmet. 
helmet. Well, that's about the um, the arc of horizon again, because there's an alignment between the two hemispheres. But uh, who wears the helmets? What um, culture is showing us the helmet? Mayan or the other one? What's the other one? In South America there. The helmets. I've done video on that way back. All about the divine stuff again. Um, helmet, okay. Uh, and then Decimus. Decimus represents December. Look, 10th month or born in December. Capricorn is the 10th month because the solar year is supposed to start in March. Okay? So you got December, January, February, March is the first month. So March should, always, should, should be the first solar month of the solar year. Okay? But all this stuff is about the moon. Aries should still be the beginning of the year. The solar cycle. The Julius calendar story, Julius Caesar story of changing to January is in regards to the moon cycles. Pisces represents end times. The whole divine Jesus story comes at the end times. So we start in Aquarius for the next constellation. Realize, realize as the sun moves forward of the stars, the sun moves forward of the stars and moon. So they move backwards on the zodiac. And these things to sit back a little bit further, the moon and the stars. They don't tell you in science that it's the sun that's moving the quickest. People can't get their head around that. So the Julius, story, Julius Caesar story, it's about his divine event. And it's, he's referring everything back to the moon. And I don't know if the Freemasons are all confused or they're deliberately keeping you away from it. I think they are. It's, it's all a lie. What they're feeding is all lies. They're keeping you away from it, okay? So Pisces represents the end time. So we start in Aquarius, the moon cycle. That's Aquarius there. Start and go around there. So you've got the moon there and the sun's down there. There's this gap here. I'm thinking, my, well, maybe it's supposed to be there because it's representing this secret. That will be revealed later. Uh, the sun moves forward, okay? So we come over here. If we change the calendar from solar to lunar, that would bring us all back into syncretism. Paganism to the Christians, the devil worshipping mongrels. No, paganism is the true, is the true story of our creation, reality, our true path in life. To start, to start understanding the true meaning to life, not the controlling, enslaved corporate world of evil money 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 see they only brought in about brought this other system and they say because of commerce and that dealing with that okay but it's taking us away from the true meaning of life you need to understand this not this corporate bullshit okay it's the moon cycles, the full moon is the most divine. All spiritual enlightenment of the kings anyway comes about the full moon in their moon sign they were born in. Okay, so back to these three dudes here. Brutus, representing his, his old dumb self, his physical world, mental, conscious state. That's a killer, or you know, that's a killer. <laughs> it's a preventer of him waking up, but it's thanks to this 
Mm, no, I can't describe it, but anyway. It's it part of the system, the old way. And then you've got um, uh, the, pl the place. The place and the time. So you've got maybe the reason, the place and the time, you could say. Reason because he's dumb. He needs to wake up. He's going through his second birth. Spiritual enlightenment. There's the place, the meeting place. It's actually in here, not a, not exactly as before the equinox, going down to Hades, and um, oh, here we go. Okay, this part of where I was getting confused up here. Well, whoa, we're going back to the Jesus story here, really, because. They've mentioned Mars, March. Okay, they confuse everything. It's all confused. Only a king can decipher it. He is physically born in March. Okay? Oh, no, sorry, conceived in March. Conceived in March. This is the, uh, you know, the season. Conceived in March. He is... Physically born in Capricorn, the 10th month. But his divine awakening is over here. It's the same, it's be the same story. Physically born. If you track, well I can, I can, I can backtrack. So the 20, back in the day, it was the 23rd, was the Pisces. He's born, uh, conceived in Pisces, moon sign. Born in the moon sign of Pisces. Most like, possibly, most likely. But his spiritual awakening is full moon. These aren't full moons. Full moon. Second birth. So, we've got Brutus, Troy, found of Britain. That's to do with the gap. Um, found in Britain. Okay, so there's no real connection between the three there. We've just got the uh, Cassius, the hollow, at the time is there. The time it happens. Okay, the time it happens there. Now, stick to those three I mentioned before. Then we just have to bring, uh, make sure we've got March involved. So, conception, physically born nine months later, and later on in life, when he's um, at peace with himself, he can go through spiritual enlightenment. And it follows a solar eclipse, so he'll end up over here, and the full moon will be down here in Pisces full moon. That's the whole Jesus story, okay? They reckon no one knows all this stuff. And as a shout out to Bro Sanchez. I've watched many YouTube sites. He's the only guy who's switched on. Jason on Archaic, he's, um, you know, kudos to him for all his studies and what he's come to know and understand, but he doesn't have the deep wisdom like Sanchez does. So, take that from me, because I know. Sanchez mentioned um, in one of his videos recently, when we decode the Bible, and I'm sitting there thinking, hey, I've decoded the Bible, mate. I have, I know what the whole thing is all about. Everything. <laughs> But um, you can go listen to those guys that Flippin Sanchez went off all Flippin for ages on the same thing, repeating himself. Um, and a lot of these guys just talk, talk, talk. Good talkers. So if you, want, if you like listening to the guys talk, listen to the big stories. But you're going to have to come back here for what it all means. Because I, I explain what it all means. They talk about it. They don't know exactly what it is. They want to know, they need to come here and they'll find it. Okay? 
So yeah, it's quite, um, I don't know if you wouldn't call him clever, I'd say very wise, Sanchez. And Archaic, when he talks about the, um, the coming of this uh, um, phoenix out of the, you know, the story of the phoenix rising out of the ashes, that's another story of the divine event because you have to go through fire to be born again. You have to go through Christ, that's the fire of the sun, to be born again. So fire is representing the Milky Ways, you see. Phoenix, the phoenix rising out of the ashes. The ashes of the two Milky Ways coming together. And the two Milky Ways, they follow the ecliptic, the uh, magnetic field of Earth, the toroidal field, the plowshare. So they're both curved and they form the wings. If you put the sun in the middle there, the sun's there where they meet at this area here. So you've got the wing here and the wing from the north. It's flying around. So you've got the, the, the depiction that way on the earthly system. But then you have the manly rebirth system. He's, he's reborn. He's, he's the phoenix, which is basically the same story as the Lucifer. The morning sun, the morning, however they describe it, is the new reborn, the newborn man. It starts this new life in the, the morning. It's usually a beautiful spring morning. Lucifer or Phoenix rising. Same thing. He's saying it's going to happen. Well, in 42, 2040. No, it's not. 